Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name's Bill and we are doing podcast again! Well, we're not doing Death Battle podcast or DC ones, uh, we're branching out a bit, we're looking into other comic book medias. Joining with me is Saber King. What up? And um, we don't have a third guest, Duo was a little busy, Jaru has no interest in Judge Dredd or comic book moves in general, your only mate doesn't enjoy violence, and Sean, I forgot to ask him... <laughs> So, I had to make do with uh, Richard. <laughs> I, yes. I mean, make do. No, I, I enjoy his company. He's a fun guy. Oh, uh, you're too kind? Yeah, I don't, I don't mean it. <laughs> Alright, so, why are we talking about Judge Dredd in particular? Well, recently, Netflix had an update, had a whole bunch of movies after uh, December, got rid of all its Christmas movies, and it starts off the year with an apocalyptic movie where... The law is taken over and uh, having to round up people who aren't following the law, either by very extreme measures. Sound familiar? No. No. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, in fact, where a majority of people have to carry something on them, wear something because of this apocalyptic world, no, it doesn't ring a bell at all. <laughs> no, 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 it doesn't. Seriously, Netflix have a sick sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Yes, they do. Did, did you see all the apocalyptic movies they had last year? <laughs> uh, I did not. I think they were trying to send a message. But anyway, um, one of those <laughs> movies that was added was Dread. Not the Sylvester Stallone one. No, just Dread by... Well, not by, but acted by Carl Urban, who you may know from The Boys as Billy Butcher. Yes, and from the J.J. Abrams Star Trek reboot movies. Oh, really? I didn't know he was in that. Yeah, yeah, he played Bones. I should probably stress, I'm not too familiar with the actor Carl Urban. I only know him from Dread and The Boys. Uh, I'm sure he's a terrific actor. Uh, I've seen a lot of his Comic-Con interviews. He seems like a very funny chap. Oh, yeah, I'm very nice, very nice. Uh, it's always the guys that look the most fearsome that turn out to be the really nice ones. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's a backward society. So, <laughs> Dread... <laughs> Uh, I recently, I mean, I've seen this movie years ago, like during my high school days and my sixth form days, but, you know, at the time I watched it, I watched it as a little edgy teenager, you know, fuck the rules and all that. <laughs> uh, and I saw it's nothing more than just an another action flick that, you know, you'd slip on because you're bored or you just want to watch something before bed. Um... The reason I wanted to get Richard involved because he knows a bit more about this character than I do, because I only know him from the movies and a few fan-made death battles. So, Richard, what's your history with Judge Dredd? <laughs> uh, my history with Judge Dredd is basically just, um, well, I, I saw the Sylvester Stallone movie. That was my first introduction to the character. Um, I did not know that he was not an American comic creation. Dread is actually a UK comic creation um, for a comic series called 2000 AD. Um, had a lot that. of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of... Uh, they had a lot of great uh, characters, and one of them that stood out was, of course, Dread, Judge Dredd himself. And... I didn't know anything about this guy, but then when I saw the Stallone movie, I'm like, well, I mean, the comics looked interesting. I don't think I'll take the the Stallone movie as actual. Um, and I don't, I don't think I'll buy that it's an adaptation of it. I, I will just take the comics as their own thing. So then I read some of the comics, and yeah, they were. Um, they were very political. They were, of course, very um, grimy, very dark, and the dark style was also kind of unique, based on like, especially compared to like other comic books that came out during this time period. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, so it's kind of like with the whole um, it, uh, static shock thing, where they wanted to illustrate it as like some sort of street art type of comic. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, again, I've 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 read dark comics when I was a kid before, so dread was really nothing new. But I did like the idea of okay, um, this character who is essentially judge, jury, executioner, and he operates as a police officer in this dystopian future where the world basically has just become destroyed and the remnants of it now live in this city where they have just rebranded the judicial system and cops can now decide on the penalty for criminals on whether they should be arrested or killed like so so many great opportunities and then Wait, when you know, i do that already <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, yes this I, isn't I a political the... podcast i'm just saying uh, i just saw the opportunity no no. To make well, the joke. Well, no no yeah well again the comics were very political um back I mean, in the true. day and they they still have some very big um th what's the word i'm looking for um impact you know uh, yeah, yeah, they, they they have a lot to say on on politics and where we could be going. But regardless of that, so then as far as this movie com goes, I saw the, I I pretty much saw that it was coming out, and I was like, oh my god, this this actually looks pretty cool, and I was very excited to see it, but I couldn't see it because either my theater didn't have it or. It just kind of went under the radar, so I didn't get a chance to see this movie until yeah. after it was already done in theaters. So that's pretty much um, my main uh, history with Dread. But I think, technically speaking, my history with Dread started with RoboCop, because RoboCop was actually inspired by Judge Dread. Oh, really? I didn't actually know that. Yes, like also, the whole I do the first robot. people if you can hear no. my Discord. Um, we're not doing Google Hangouts. In fact, they've they've terminated that now. And they want me to sign up for the yeah. new Google thing, but I'm like, fuck the police, or, fuck Google. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, I've not okay. bought your console, and I'm not going to sign up to another thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay, but yeah, yeah, no, um, the RoboCop character was actually created and inspired by Judge Dredd. Uh, so, technically, I've been a fan of Judge Dredd since RoboCop. That's, okay, that's, I mean, I can definitely see where the two, in fact, even the worlds are very similar. I can see why now people kind of want to see that for a death battle, but it's not as popular, of course. Um, no, no, it's not. Before we actually get to the movies, like, or this movie's sort of, well, it's not really a secret film, but it really did fly under the radar. But I'll get to that uh, in a second. Yeah. Yes. Um, so is that what you have to say about your history with Judge Dredd? Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Okay, um, my history of him, like you said, he's a UK character, which I didn't even know that. I always thought he was an American or an Austrian type of character. <laughs> I don't know, I think like, mm, because he looks nope. like Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, that's why I kind of get the idea his, his comments came from Austrian. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like that sort of person that tries to guess where it came from just based on like the art style. Like it's really obvious, like oh, this is anime, obviously from Japan. But sometimes I'm wrong. Like Elvin Lee came from Germany. <laughs> yeah. So it's like oh, okay, never mind then. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of like my own little personal fun game. Um, but Dread, funny enough, I did not hear about him through the Stallone films. Or I would say the Dread film was my true introduction to him. But no, my introduction to him was through um, going to Comic Cons and seeing people dress like Dread, and just always doing the typical meme. I am the the like. <laughs> oh, and also I watched Nostalgia Critics review on Judge Dread, and I kind of felt like this character was not for me. Cause the way people portrayed him, the way the movie Sylvester Stone, he just came off across as just another eighties sort of hero, like a cliche hero, and that's not a bad thing. But obviously, growing up in the 21st era, that's not really my thing. Oh, I just knocked out my earphones. <laughs> even my <laughs> earphones are like, what? <laughs> and even now, even after watching this film, I haven't looked up the comics because I'm not a huge comic book reader now like I used to be. 
Uh, no, there's not that many comic book stores around here. The only comic book store that's close to me is the one in uh, my old workplace. <laughs> and that's like two bus journeys to get there. And I'm like, ah, that's not worth it. <laughs> it it's, you know, I just read comic books online now, like I've done with so many DC and Ruby comics. Which, if you haven't yeah. read the Ruby comics, you definitely should. They're actually a lot of fun. Uh huh. <laughs> well, there's that one comic that we'll save that for another video, maybe. Um, yeah. And Judge Dredd, he seems like an interesting character. Sylvester Stallone was entertaining with him. Uh, oh yeah, the, other, the yeah. other thing I know Judge Dredd from was that older SNES or Sega Genesis game. Uh, yes. That was such a fun game. I love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll do a video on it. <laughs> maybe you will. Um, so those are my introductions to him. But as far as his character came across... I just saw him as basically a Terminator or Robocop type character. Like, he's not that important, he's just there to shoot things and entertain people. So, that's my brief history of it. Uh, so, as far as this film's popularity, obviously it did not do well in the box office. And I feel like this film suffers from the Iron Giant type of scenario. Where there's clearly a lot of ambition behind the film... But, unfortunately, <clears throat> the studio that wanted to get out did not have faith in this film. <laughs> uh, you could say that, yeah. No, um, well, really what this film... I think the main thing that's been publicly documented about this film and why it didn't go on to be such a massive uh, juggernaut in its own right is because it was based off of a UK comic book and it was an R-rated film, and those two things are usually generally of a kind of a red flag, because especially coming off of the Sylvester Stallone film, everyone just assumed this was going to be a remake of that. Nobody really was that deep into the comics, because again, it's like Judge Dredd is a UK property, and he does have a cult fan base here in the States. But again, he's he's a very obscure character compared to Batman or Spider Man. So Even yeah, and kind of has more of a bigger following over here than in Dread, which is kind of funny because yeah, this is the no. thing I kind of find funny. Punisher is more of a, yeah. an American hero or anti-hero, yet he's super popular in the UK and Americans are just like, eh, he's all right. Judge Dread, yeah, like in the UK. Um, and we're just like, eh, he's all right. And America's like, yeah, Judge Dredd! <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, it's yeah, like the yeah, complete no, reverse. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Well, another thing I feel that kind of set this movie to fail instantly is it, it came out in 2012, uh, and that was oh. a packed year for movies. Like, you had so many movies, especially superheroes. Like, you had The Avengers... You had the Dark Knight. Oh, you had the Dark Knight Rises. You I had the Amazing Spider-Man reboot. Reboot. Um, you, you just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> reboot. I can't talk today. Um, you, you you just had so many uh, comic book films come out that year, and it didn't really help that Judge Dredd was coming out at least two months after the Dark Knight Rises, and Ooh. even more than months after the Amazing Spider-Man and the Avengers. So again, it was it was coming out towards the tail end of the summer blockbusters, and that really wasn't a good sign. No, that's, and, uh, you're already setting yourself up there, because if it came out maybe in January or February, maybe it would have had a better chance. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, if you're and the funny really, thing is, if you're going to ride off yeah. the success of Batman, Spider Man, and you just even said it, the Avengers, which nearly broke cinema records on its debut, yeah, you're going to have a steep competition. Yeah, no. Well, all three of those movies combined broke records in one way or another. But it's like the irony with Dread is that the film was. Because this movie has a very low budget. It's basically an independent film. Yeah, you, can, uh, you can see that despite its low budget, though, there's a lot of effort that goes into it. Like right now, I'm just at the bit where the old man gets crushed by the door. And I do kind of like the yeah. mixture of CGI and practical effects. Yeah, no, like like most, most of the film does use uh, CGI effects, but there is practical effects too. Um, it, so it's not like it's not like the film would because again, films like this fail. 
because they're either too expensive of a budget or they're just not ambitious enough. And a dread from all accounts, it had the perfect budget. It, again, it was an independent film, very much arcaning and uh, being a physical representation of the comics because 2000 AD is sort of a independent comic. And you would think that, okay, well, that's perfect for Dredd uh, for his first feature film for it to be an independent film and but no it just it, it again it just it came out in a packed year with so many superhero films that it ju- and it just kind of just came and went like if, if it had been made today i think it would have had more success but even then it's like okay this film showed us that the character is just he, he's not uber popular to make a fr- to to make a franchise he's he's just a cult figure yeah i think that's kind of the unfortunate fate of not just dread comics or not just dread the film but dread in general is that he is an interesting yeah, no. character but unfortunately his fan base is very limited now this is the thing that i think a lot of M rated. By the way, over here in the UK, Judge Dread and Dread are rated eighteen. They're not rated R. They're rated yeah. M. <laughs> yeah. Which is kind yeah, of, no, <laughs> makes sense. It's kind of ridiculous how over in your country it's still. Oh, it's a fifteen. That's fine. <laughs> like we see, we see a man get his face blown off. We see a man whose brains get splattered. A guy you see in slow motion, a bullet passing through someone's cheek. What someone yeah, saw that in yeah. your country was like, oh, that's fifteen. I'm sure kids wouldn't mind that. <laughs> You guys are insane. Well, I mean, yeah. Given uh, recent events, yeah, it's not too inaccurate. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of the unfortunate thing about not just dread, but just R-rated and M-rated characters. You have a very limited fan base just at the plain start. Like exactly. So you have a limited fan base. So you've got to have this character stand up. Like even the boys before the Amazon series did not have a fan base. It was. That's very small. I, no one, especially me, I never heard of The Boys. It was only through Amazon Prime that that's when I started hearing more about it. And Dredd is kind of in that similar boat where he's... Like, I kind of feel bad. You could tell that like, this film and even all of the Dredd comics and other medias, they have a lot of effort put behind it. If the character was more mainstream, maybe if he had better... That's the other thing that I also think this film struggled with. The advertisement. I barely saw any advertisement for it. Uh, yeah, no, exactly. That, that's that's another thing that really kind of... Um, that, that really shot this film to hell. Because the only time... because I, thankfully, did know about it. Uh, and I did see the trailer. Because uh, I went to go see The Dark Knight Rises. And before they played the film... Uh, they did play a trailer for Dread, and I was like, "Oh wow, this looks cool! It's like finally we're getting a, a, a Dread movie that captures the character." And then it just came and went. Like, and and the, one of the other things that really made this film kind of fly under the radar is it was kind of it it, it was mainly mark its main source of marketing was 3D. Like, it was particularly advertised to be a 3d movie like you like here in the states people had to drive all the way to theaters to go see a 2d showing of this film because whenever you did get a chance to see the film it was always in 3d and some people don't want to see movies in 3d so that just further it's more expensive really yeah no but that was just kind of the final nail in the coffin for the film uh markability wise is okay not only was it based off of uh a uk comic book character it was rated r it was already coming out towards the tail end of the summer blockbuster of 2012 and superhero films but it was now it was mainly marketing it, it, it was mainly meant to be seen in 3D. Like, its its title was even called Dread 3D. Like, it, it needed to uh, be seen in 3D. So that kind of killed it even more. Yeah, and it, and it's funny. very sad. The only film that was advertised to be 3D, which I think worked out well for it, was How to Train Your Dragon. Because, and I'm not jabbing Dread for this, but it is one of those movies where... They force, they do the 3D thing where it's just going in your face, and I get that's what 3D is going for, but when you look at films like How to Train Your Dragon and stuff like that, 
you it's like you're going through a magical journey it's like you're there whereas dread you're just seeing a bullet get close to your face and someone's blood and guts splatter near your face which yeah <laughs> yeah That's well again turn some three... people away yeah, no, well, 3D plays a big part in this movie. Like, they even they even shot this movie using 3D technology. So that was what they really were hoping would make this film a profit is, okay, you know, it's 3D, it's going to be shot in 3D, it's going to have 3D elements when we shoot it. Like, we're, we're just going to really capitalize on 3D right now. And see, that's kind of the problem because it's like, okay, already you're, you're mainly, you're limiting and alienating your fans. Like, that, that's, that's a big problem. Like, and it's no wonder now even before the pandemic and covid 3d kind of drifted out after like i think it was 2014 like i never saw that many advertisements for see it in 3d <laughs> it's now just an option like oh even the films even if the film's not made to be in 3d it's like oh do you want to see endgame in 3d no thanks yeah i'm no yeah, no, 3D is is very much dead. Like, it, it's it's a thing of the past, it's dead. But it's like, Dread came out at this time where it was kind of... A, it, 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 again, it was kind of like, okay, also see this movie in 3D. Like, you would have showings that showed the movie in 2D and 3D. So that would just further boost your revenue. But again, it's like, the, the problem with Dread is... It it, rel it relied heavily on it for its profit margin, and I feel like that was kind of that was kind of a bad sign. Yeah. So yeah, that's my brief history with Dread. So I guess now we should actually discuss the movie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. So uh, I went to see this with friends in theaters. Obviously, uh, I think <laughs> at the time we just finished. Um, I'm trying to think. We either finished a semester or something like that. Um, we decided to celebrate by seeing two movies. Um, we saw The Avengers first, of course. Um, and then I remember seeing it advertised, uh, Dread. So, I was thinking, that looks kind of cool. The problem was, though, we weren't old enough to see it. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of like a, well, bollocks. <laughs> How are we going <laughs> to see this movie? Uh, so we had to actually uh, get one of my friends' older brother and sister to come along <laughs> And sit with three annoying little kids <laughs> to watch the film. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Can't, like, okay, I'll keep the story brief. When me and my friends went there first to go see Dread, the guy that served us was like, no, you guys are clearly not old enough. Then when we came back with the siblings, it was the same guy who served us. And he was like, I don't think these kids will find this movie appropriate. <laughs> like, do you not recognize us? <laughs> we tried it. It's like he couldn't clearly see that we were using these people. <laughs> it's, it's like that scene from um, the South Park film with the homeless guy and the kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so we watched the film and upon first viewing, we didn't actually like it, as far as I remember. Like, in fact... The theater was kind of empty. There was like one person there. He was the only one cheering. I like, kind of, uh, I just only enjoyed the action, but that was about it. And right, because at the time I wasn't really a story enthusiast. You know, I wasn't interested in dialogue or characters. I just seen them die. <laughs> uh, so, but upon rewatching the film, like years later, I started to enjoy it more and more and more. Uh, especially after looking into the Judge Dredd character, I actually saw a pretty cool uh, character, especially Carl Urban's portrayal was really spot on. Uh, yeah, no, like, right away, I think that's the main thing that we should probably get get out of the way. It's like, obviously, compared to Stallone, like, Carl Urban, he, res he actually... He actually knows the character, he, he, he has knowledge of the character, and the fact that Unlike, unlike Stallone, who at the time, you know, he was an action star. He couldn't afford to, to not show his face because, again, uh, his face is what made money. But the fact that Carr Urban was like, okay, no, I will, I will keep this helmet on. And, I, and he mainly focused on, his, on, on, only del on only really delivering dialogue and coming off as a character – by just moving his mouth, like that—that's the main thing that it, it, he that, really that, does that show 
a lot of his character just through his mouth movements and even the way yes, he talks. like yeah, like he would even have to take he would even have to learn how to move his mouth to convey an emotion and I feel like his determination and his passion really shows when he's under that helmet because again, it's like every time I've I've watched the film, which I'll get to my experience later, but every time I watch the film, my my eyes are just fixated on his mouth and just seeing how he conveys an emotion whether it's uh whether it's you know badass or just you know all kinds of things really Mm. uh he does have a very kissable mouth i'll admit (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) um but yeah it's like every time i watch this film i find it better each time in fact upon uh, my recent viewing, um, the goatee character, the one in the leather jacket, I named him Goatee Jack. <laughs> and then <laughs> threw him off the ledge. I was like, no, Goatee Jack! <laughs> 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 he was just a random minion I named. I felt bad just seeing him plummet to his death. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, your microphone cut out a bit there, uh, Rich. Back to what I was saying. Uh, so a lot of the times I'm watching this movie, and the more I watch it, I notice more details in the environment, how much... Okay, fun fact about this movie as well, which I thought was kind of interesting. This was shot in a, in a, a block. Like, some of it is set pieces, of course, but a lot of it was shot in a general, like, block of, like, flats, which was kind of cool. Uh, it really added yes, to with green screens. Yeah, there's obviously green screen as well, like... Uh, I feel like more of the budget went towards the um, the CGI city of the opening because uh, there's a, there's so much practical effects and there's like even when people are shot, it generally looks like they were shot. Yeah, like it looked like they were hit by something. There's blood spewing out of them, and as disgusting as it is to say, even though um, in a lot of movies they portray blood spewing out as like a ghost of Tsushima moment when it's like a fountain of blood just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even if they were shot by saints like very small, they're like, oh, I'm mortally wounded. No, in this movie, it kind of portrays how it would actually be like to be shot by these guns. So it's not just, oh, their body parts go flying off. No, it shows them like bleeding out on the floor. Like a lot of the people they shoot are like on the floor crawling. They just walk past them. Like some poor guy got shot in like his heart and he's just like going, <laughs> struggling to breathe. It's like, oh my God, that is brutal. <laughs> <laughs> like the fact that that actor put that much detail into his death like it's not just because that's the thing even in like the Robocop movie when you shoot a bad guy anywhere and they just automatically die <laughs> it's like there's no like dramatic oh no I've been shot or oh blood like a blood splatter it's just like shot wound oh I'm dead <laughs> just dramatic fall over <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nearly, nearly every film is kind of guilty. There's, there's still kind of are, especially with like Avengers films. Like they, they still kind of exaggerate what it's like to be shot with a pistol. Like you shoot someone with a pistol and they just go flying like two feet across the room. It's like, I don't think a handgun would cause your whole body to do that, mate. Oh. Uh-huh. Um. But that, but that just really goes show the amount of detail in it. Uh. And also the brutality in this film. Like they really wanted to show that this world is brutal. Like, they showed riots happening at the start, the, the minigun section, where they showed, like, what happens when people are caught in the line of fire between, like, criminals and police officers. Like, they even, they don't show the bodies, but they show a family curling up behind a de- table, and that table just gets ripped to shreds. And all you see is the dad's body just get flung out. It's like, oh my god. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no mercy for the weak. <laughs> like, yeah. Obviously, they couldn't show the actual kids being shot because I'm pretty sure that would I think at the time that was actually illegal yeah like you could show a kid getting slapped but if you showed them getting gunned down no nah, that's your movie's not allowed in theaters mate yeah uh as well as like one thing the film also wanted to show off not just its 3D <laughs> elements which I can kind of see it now looking at a lot of the clips right now yeah, there was definitely a lot of moments where they really wanted to emphasize the 3D sections. But I, I kind of yeah. like the concept with the whole, um, the drugs. The slow-mo. The, the slow-mo. Where, and fun fact, they actually got Gavin from Rooster Teeth, who was also part of the slow-mo guys, to actually do a lot of these scenes. 
for those yes. that didn't know, which I thought was kind of cool. And looking at it now, I can definitely see, yeah, this is definitely Gavin's work. Yeah. Um, and it really did emphasize like how this drug is, and especially in one scene where these crackheads are selling drugs. So the main villain, Mama, which I have a lot to say about her, and it might not come off as positive, but I'll let Richard say his piece about the film before I get to her. Um, but when she threw those guys off the ledge and they and they had the slow-mo, you do briefly see it through first person perspective, like what it'd feel like falling to your death very slowly. It's like, oof. Like, you kind of feel sorry for the guy, in a way. Yeah. Um, and as for a lot of the action in the film, it's solid. Um, it's not over the top, like, Dredd's not doing some freaking somersault, like, leg uh, hug around the head, flinging them around. He's not, like, doing Superman punches at people through walls. He generally, like, his posture and his movement feels like a, an actual police officer doing his job. Like he's cautious, exactly. he watches around every corner, uh, he checks the bodies to make sure they're a threat. Uh, even with his dialogue, even when someone was taking um, a food vendor hostage, his first instinct was to try and negotiate. Uh, he wasn't just immediately like, oh, I'm going to get you, it'll be a shut. <laughs> like, he does kind of have a quip, like, when he goes, I heard you, hot shot. And the guy's like, what? I said, hot shot. And the gun initiates the hot shot mode. <laughs> Yes. Like, it has a few quips, but it's not like 80s cringe type. Like, you know. No, and it's, 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 no, like, and it's not like and it's not like Marvel quips where every time a character does quip, the you the like it, it's brought to a to a halt so you can laugh at it and then boop it's like no, it's very again, it's like Dread 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 is very uh, he's very much a dry humor kind of person with his quips. He's not going to be in a gunfire and, and like shoot off someone's head. He said, you should have been ahead of the situation. It's like, he's not going to do that. He tries to get the job done. And the only time he'll even make a quip is when it's like a final words to the bad guy. Yeah, like, like exactly. His, like his final line to Mama when he uh, he says, like, how do you plead? And she doesn't respond. He just goes, defense noted, and just throws her out. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like a fuck you sort of thing. Like his way of saying F you. Well, I wouldn't say that, but sure. <laughs> well, I mean, because obviously, like, that's what I like about Dredd as well. He's not the typical F you sort of guy, like, F this, F that, you know. Like, he doesn't, yeah, no. he doesn't really well, swear that much, because I just don't feel that as part of his character. He's meant to look like a professional police officer. Well, yeah, no. Well, again, you know, H Dredd himself, like I said, in his comic book, and since he is a UK creation... He very much carries the UK dry wit humor that I can uh, that yeah uh, you can't tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah, I can confirm. Like that, yeah. this is how I actually imagine a police officer being, even during like these scenarios. Like even when he's given off, like even spoiler. I don't know. It's not really. It doesn't matter. If it's a spoiler. It came out in 2012. At the end of the film, when he's talking to the chief inspector. And he mentions a drug lord, multiple cartels, uh, four corrupted police officers. He goes about it like it's a normal day. <laughs> it's like, well, oh. to him, it was a normal day. Exactly. It's like, oh, you know, we had a shootout with multiple cartels. Um, we took down a crime lord. Uh, oh, yeah, we have four mm. judges uh, that corrupted. Oh, they're dead now. So, you know, um, I'll just get to the paperwork. <laughs> yeah, no. God, I wonder what the paperwork was like for this entire film. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> they, had, they had to yeah. order, like, 15 Domino's and two Chinese meals to get through it. <laughs> I don't think I don't think those foods exist in, in the Dread world. I'm pretty sure they were wiped out. Most likely, yeah. Um, so, overall, I think the film is still really good. Every time I view it, it's better each time. It's not like when... There's a really hyped movie. The hype kind of fades away because you don't feel the same hype you had when you first saw the film. Um, right. To give an example, as much as I love Endgame, Infinity War, The Avengers, it was the hype that really showed off and made the film better. Then after you've watched the film, I'd say roughly five times, the hype kind of dies down. Yeah, no. It's similar to like when Spider Man was introduced in Civil War, it's like, oh my god, Spider Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. After the 10th viewing, oh, here comes Spider Man scene. Uh, there's not really that hype anymore. 
Whereas with Dread, I didn't have high expectations for it. I don't think anyone really did. Well, no, of course not. <laughs> but the more you watch it and the more you analyse it, there is so much great potential. Oh, I'm, I don't just getting up to the scene right now where Goatee Jack falls to his death. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like, even you know it's on the walls, there's, like, F-mutants, because there's, like, mutant people that live amongst the humans. Yeah. So, there's, uh, again, driving that very political, that very, um, that racial, uh, type of environment that this world seems to live in. Uh. Yeah. Uh, that's my final thoughts on the film in general. I'll talk, um, I'm gonna let... Uh, Richard talk about his part of the movie, then we're going to essentially talk about the main cast of the movie. So, uh, what do you think on your first viewing of this film, Rich? 